tightness around Winks is almost suffocating. Everyone wants a piece of her. Everyone wants to get close to her. She's racing's equivalent to Muhammad Ali. And yeah, she floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. She breaks all the records today. She's a champion, Winks. And today, I get the best seat in the house to do it all again. When Winx walks into the theatre as a horse, all eyes will be on her. The greatest mare in the world. And what a privilege it is to ride the people's horse. But when we make the turn down the tunnel and onto the track, it's just me and her. When the gates open, it's all about getting her to relax and keeping her out of trouble. And when she gets to the corner, it's like hitting the pedal on the Lamborghini. She just goes. Look at her, rip clear inside the 200. There's nothing like that roar from the crowd when she hits the front and goes for home. What she does on the racetrack stirs emotion. She brings tears to those close to her. It's her fight. It's her will to win. Every race, she defies belief. And today, she goes for 17 in a row. Just the thought of it excites me. It's the pressure to keep alive the great mare's invincibility. So here's to Winx. May the greatness continue. So almost from the horse's mouth, wasn't it? From Huey Bowman. What a great piece. And there's Chris Waller. He talked about the anxiety that he f suffers from, really, with uh, Simon O'Donnell earlier today. And we know that story. We realise the pressure Chris is under. You only have to talk to him on a race day like this. But the mighty mare saddled up with all her fans, all of us, I think, coming here, just expecting her to win. And that's part of the dread for Chris, I think, and the connections, Chester, because the unthinkable might happen. We don't expect it to happen, but it could. That's racing. Oh, we really don't expect it to happen. I think we've almost given up trying to get her beaten in every race. We're always like, oh, maybe it's the ground, or maybe it's Hartnell, remember, in the Cox Plate, or maybe it's it's Chautauqua last time out. But she just seems invincible, and something would have to go wrong for her to get beaten, and we don't want anything to go wrong, no, That's obviously. the way it seems. A correct way after the Australian Oaks. So Huey Bowman already with a big group one winner with a very good filly in Bonneville. She was so impressive. She had Melbourne Cup and probably Corfu Cup written all over her today. Perfect rhyme runs very well again. The Squirty Spirit, that's a mighty job to win one Oaks and be third in another. Than the first four was 2,744. So we come to the totes for the Longines Queen Elizabeth. This is a strange board. We know that. Hartnell's a terrific horse and so is Happy Clapper. And so is Exospheric and so is the United States. And sense of occasions in career best form. Harlem comes with interesting form. Singing and no doubt I think are outclassed. But there you have. Winks at $1.10. So the shortest priced favourite ever in this race is $1.11. That was way, way back. Chesco, I know yeah, uh, Tullock and also General Commander won. They, yeah, won? they, they okay. both won, actually, but we're going a long way back. Cheska, we're all thinking about Huey Bowman, of course. We just saw him a moment ago, but somebody who's also very close, of course, is his wife, Christine, and his two beautiful daughters. And you had a chance this week to catch up with I them sure and find out about their story. But all conditions, all distances, all challenges, here's Sweet 16 for weeks. Well, Christine, I feel like we've got to know you a, a very little bit because we always see you in the mountain yard giving Hugh a big hug after mm. his one with Winks and celebrating. But how did you find yourself here in Australia and married to an Australian? So I came over here in 2002 with some horses for Dermot Weld. And uh, fortunately, they were Vinnie Rowe and Media Puzzle. And so we had a, a bit of success with them. And uh, I went back to Ireland and I thought, oh, you know, it's lovely and all the rest. But I got a bit of a travel bug, I suppose, when I, when I came to Melbourne. So I flipped a coin and uh, heads was Australia, tails was America. I said, rightio, whichever this lands on, that's where I'm going to go. And so it landed on, on, on heads and I picked Australia. So uh, landed back in Sydney and I rocked up to Ron Quinton's stable at Manwick um, to, to get a job. Unfortunately, Ron employed me because Ron had worked in Ireland in the 80s. Okay. Uh, and then um, Hugh was an apprentice to Ron at the time, 
and um, and so yeah the rest is kind of history it was his birthday I think soon after I'd started and he asked me out on a date and I said no <laughs> and then he continued and he asked me again and I still said no <laughs> and the third time lucky I said oh okay well I'll go for one dinner with you jockeys have these reputations don't they that they're supposed to be a little bit uh, naughty you know so <laughs> I, I wanted a good boy not a naughty boy but I soon I was only with him um, you know, a short while and I realized he's the best boy so I'm very lucky He's a great husband, a really good father. He uh, loves his girls like, like no other, and, you know, who, who's to say in five, five years or something, you know, a few years down the road we might not, we might have a, another baby, but at this point, no, I think uh, we're very happy. Hugh's happy with all his girls, including Winx, you know, so. Look at a rip player inside the 200. And what about for you watching when he's riding Winx? Your heart must be, oh, must be beating. Absolutely, in my mouth, I, 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 crazy, crazy like um, when she won in, on the wet ground a few weeks ago. I just couldn't believe, like, um, the way she annihilated the, the, the whole field that day. My eyes were popping out of my head. I just couldn't believe it. It was just the excitement of it. Just great to be part of it. Hell, lucky for what we are. There obviously have been a lot of highlights, but what's been the main highlight for Hugh's career? Yeah. Probably Winx's second Cox Plate. Yeah, he's really very excited about that and just sort of was blown away that she, the way she did yeah, it. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, very excited about that. So if you were to probably ask, that's probably what would be his most exciting. Two in a row, and she joins the all time great of the two. Who's the main woman in Hugh's life? Uh, I would say Winx. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Winx. Um, I got asked this question the other day, you know, um, he's uh, he's got a, an affiliation with like a lot of Kiwi females, someone said to me the other day, and I said, yeah, so long as I have four legs and a tail, <laughs> I'll be happy with that, you know. You get jealous no, 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 but, but, but yeah, certainly um, he can have an affair with Winx any, any, any day of the week, I don't mind. What a lovely interview, Jessica. Just minutes ago, this is Christine with, with the Oaks and Huey's win. I mean, she's such a part of his story, isn't she? Oh, absolutely. And for, for the one watching, like, it must be almost harder because you can't do anything about the result, yet you so want the right result for your husband or, or whoever it is that you're supporting. And um, wonderful for Hugh also to have such a great oh. support. And um, Christine actually said that she thinks that Hugh really went to another level in his career when they got married and had the children and they settled down and got very serious about life and and really it took him to, to the next stage in his career she also told me that when they go down to the start winks and hugh he sings her a little song to it's, keep her calm uh, we're, we're getting great insights here we're getting great insights and here is winks being settled up as we as we speak right now so the moment's nearly arrived hasn't it for her to go from those stalls that stable area into the theater of the horse which then everybody gets a good good look at her so she is relaxed she it, Professional's the word that's oh. used so much Consummate about her. Consummate professional. She just knows exactly what she's doing. We saw her here last week for a track gallop, and I think she even knew it was just a gallop that day, whereas she'll know it's race day here today, obviously, with, with the crowds and, and having everything go, well, uh, coming out into the mountain yard with the other horses. She'll know it's, it's game day, for sure. And just because she was awesome in the George Rider. That was her most previous uh, run. It was a couple of weeks ago on a very, very heavy track. She beat quality opposition. We know that. Well, there's a grey horse behind her that finishes yeah. third who I think we saw come out last weekend and absolutely annihilate them in the TJ Smith. And look what she does to him. Chitaka, and she's done that, yeah. sorry, to Tarka, and she's done that to a lot of very, very good horses. And on conditions in the past that we thought weren't all that suitable for her, today, more suitable, 2,000 metres, a, a firmer track, and the sky's the limit. What's she going to do? We've had a lot of favourites win this race, but it has been a graveyard for short price horses, the Queen Elizabeth, over the years. We've had a, a lot of very, very short price favourites not win. Our Waverley Star was one of them at a dollar and 22 now he was a great New Zealander had the battle with bone crusher in the previous Cox play Bart Cummings as bows and Sunline the mighty Sunline at a dollar 50 Lonro had won it the year before he lost at a dollar 26 it's a done deal who'd swept the three-year-olds he lost at a dollar 28 came back to win so look you can have a very big upset in this race yeah well uh, you know better than me but other than Sunline were any of them quite as dominant as her were they absolute champions like her so, sorry what was that? other than Sunline were any of them absolute champions like oh, yeah, Lon Lonro. Yeah? Uh, yeah, Lonro was a champ. He won 11 group ones. But okay. look, there's only one Winx. Winx is better than all those horses. Yeah. She, she, I mean, she's Kingston Town, Tullock. She's That's her level. She, she's an all-time great. Simon, do you agree with that? I, I feel like she's now on the, the absolute first page of Australian racehorses in the history of the sport. Yeah, absolutely, Bruce, because um, she's absolute, absolutely a freak in both grounds. Like, in, in the heavy, she seems to be a better horse. But on top of the gun, she's still got that electrifying turn of foot. Uh, her range 
range from seven furlongs to the mile and a quarter. She's won the 2200 metre Oaks in Queensland. She's done it all, but what we've got to continue to remember, she's only five years of age. At five years of age, she's done all of this within a matter of two years, and we're talking about her as the best of all time. And she's got a long career left uh, in her. You would imagine she'd come back for a third uh, Cox Plate. That's the target. Uh, she's going to eclipse uh, Maccabi Diva uh, in terms of uh, prize money. And, you know, Black Caviar, 15 Group 1 wins. Well, she's going to be uh, knocking on uh, Black Caviar's door, that's for sure. But for Hugh Bowman, you cannot handle the outside noise. He's going to have butterflies and he's going to be really excited. But when he gets on that horse and he gets out onto the track and he just lets a can into the gates, you can see him just sink down and then his confidence really gathers and it's just him and the horse. You break away from everybody else, adrenaline takes over, and that's where Eddie's, that's where Hugh Bowman is at his brilliant best with uh, Winks, getting away from all of that pressure and just trusting her.